Hi, my name is Wendy McGinnis, and I'm excited to spend the next few minutes with you in the Word today. If you are new to virtue, I wanted to welcome you. We have been on a journey going through the book of First Peter, and today I get to talk to you about chapter four. But in general, this book, Peter is encouraging believers that they should remain hopeful regardless of their circumstances. He acknowledges that suffering, trials, and obstacles are gonna be a part of our daily life. But at the same time, he's emphasizing that hope can enable us to live effectively. Pastor Warren Wearsby says, hope puts us in the marketplace and on the battlefield where we keep on going when the burdens are heavy and the battles are hard. I think we can all agree that the last few months have been super challenging to figure out how to navigate. We have things changing day by day. It's hard to definitively know what to do, yet we really do just wanna focus on living well. And as I read 1 Peter 4, I was encouraged by the simplicity of the overarching theme, and it's this. As believers, we are, to, are going to experience hard seasons, but ultimately we are responsible for one, and that's ourselves. And we are accountable to one, and that's to God. It kind of takes the pressure off when you think of it in that perspective. So spend a few minutes with me as we dig into Peter's practical tips on how to live a godly life during difficult times. At a high level, chapter four is broken up into two different sections. The first one is living well for God, and then the second one is suffering for a purpose. First Peter 4, 2 says, you won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your own desires, but you will be anxious to do the will of God. Ladies, doesn't that sound like a great idea? Stop chasing our endless and fruitless personal desires and instead get excited about doing the will of God. In reading this first part of the verse that said chasing your own desires, it made me start thinking about a hamster spinning in a wheel. These little rodents spend their days endlessly chasing absolutely nothing and recklessly start to spin out of control while they're probably thinking that they're doing great things with their lives. In the name of research, I spent far too much time on YouTube by myself and with my children watching these furry friends spin and fly and catapult themselves out of these wheels. And I imagine them thinking to themselves, oh, I'm just gonna go for a little jog. And then before they know it, they're flung out of that wheel. And I thought it makes even matters even worse that it took two seconds for them to hop back in the wheel for another jog because they already forgot about the consequences of their choice of just hopping in for a jog. And after a really good laugh, I started to realize that I am like those furry friends. I can sadly relate that I chase my own desires and I am trying to control my circumstances over and over again. I know that investing time into collecting material things is fruitless. I know that seeking the approval and opinion of others distracts me from God. Yet I still do both of those things. I think to myself, oh, I'll just spend a few minutes on Instagram. And then an hour later, I'm figuratively derailed and spinning because I am distracted from what I know to be true. Can you ladies relate to that, especially right now with how Instagram is looking? So the question is, how can we live well rather than chase our own desires? I'm happy to say that Peter gives us three easy steps in chapter four. The first one is pray. In verse seven, Peter says, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. I think that we can all agree that prayer is a great place to start and to reset our perspective on God and his direction and his comfort and his guidance. Jeremiah 29, 12 says, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. The Lord is always listening. Prayer is our direct line to him. Ladies, ponder that for a second. Are we taking advantage of the access that we have to the creator of the universe? He knows you by name. He cares about your concerns and he wants to be in fellowship with you. As a mom of young kids, I can get discouraged about my prayer life because it doesn't always fit in this perfect box that I envision for it. A quiet time in a quiet place with no interactions or distractions. If you're a mother, you know that that happens about as often as a double rainbow. It just doesn't happen. So I just want to encourage you, if you leave with nothing but this, it's okay for prayer to look different in different seasons of life or even from day to day. For me, it may be sprinkled throughout the day or while I'm in the shower or working out or driving to and from my kids' activities. God is always available and he doesn't require a perfect setting that we envision in our minds. He's just asking us to be disciplined and have a willing heart. So that was our first step for living um, well for God and it's prayer. Let's move on to step two, which is my personal favorite and it's show love. In verse eight, it says, most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other for love covers a multitude of sins. There is a lot of hurt and division in our nation right now and it can feel really hard to navigate. Peter's instruction boils it down for us and it's down to just loving one another. 
Simply put, be responsible for yourself and focus on love. And when the Bible says love, it means more than that, just that typical Webster dictionary definition of an intense feeling or a deep affection. 1 Corinthians 13, three through seven defines it as a verb. Many of us have heard these verses numerous times. We may have them memorized. They may be framed on our walls, but I want you to intentionally listen right now with the intent to apply this biblical definition to our current climate that we're living in. It says, are you ready? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of wrongs. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. It never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. We are human. We are gonna get this wrong. We are going to make mistakes. But if we focus on living this biblical type of love out, we will please the Lord with our lives. Okay, and then step three that Peter gives us is utilize and share the gifts God has given you. In verse 10, it says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself is speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all your strength and the energy that God supplies. I really like that part about God supplying the energy and the, and the strength. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Christ Jesus. How practical is that, ladies? As Christians, we have a responsibility to use our gifts and blessings to glorify God. He is so gracious that he gives us these gifts, but we must use them intentionally and generously in our communities. So often I think we scroll through social media and say, oh, she's doing that over there. I should do that. But when reality, we should be focusing on what God has gifted us specifically to do rather than pursuing and reaching things that weren't meant for us. What if we just focused on what God gave us and let those things that come naturally and bring us joy be the things that lead us? If God gave you the gift of encouragement, challenge yourself to reach out to someone today and encourage them. If you have the gift of giving, find a tangible way that you can go meet a need of someone. If you have the gift of service, lighten the load of a neighbor, a friend, a family member. That includes your children. We can get credit for that. And if you have the gift of evangelism, share your faith. You get the picture. God has given you a gift. Use it joyfully. And if you're not sure what gift God has given you, take any one of those for a test drive and see how it feels. In Matthew 25, 40, Jesus reminds us that whatever you did for the least of one of these brothers or sisters of mine, you did unto me. I know it can feel awkward and hard to be bold with our gifts, but all the glory goes to God when we do it unto him. Okay, so we're changing gears. That was the first half of the chapter. Chapter The second half is um, where Peter is talking to us about suffering for a purpose. It would be really nice if we could just skip this portion of the chapter, but unfortunately that's not how the word of God works. We don't get to pick and choose what we like and what we don't like. So in verses 12 through 13, Peter says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad for these trials make you partners in Christ in his suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. Persecution can cause us either to grow or to grumble, and it totally depends on our response. You get to choose and I get to choose. I find that my expectations dictate my response. A silly example from this morning is this. I work out quite a bit and my coach says, we're gonna be doing X, Y, and Z today. And when he does that, I know what to expect. I can mentally prepare and I can tough it out. I have the right perspective when I'm going into it. The same is true with our Christian life. If we expect trials and suffering to be a part of the equation, we can choose hope and joy even as we face those difficult times. We have the choice to praise God in the storm and be glad even for that trial because we know it draws us closer to him. In 1 Peter 4, 19, it says, So if you are suffering in a manner that pleases God, keep on doing what is right and trust your lives to God who created you and who will never fail you. If life was easy, we wouldn't need God. So while we're in those dark seasons, let's remember Peter's advice to pray, to show love, to utilize our gifts. And if we do these things with thankfulness and hope, we will live well for God.